Okay, so here's part one of three of last um, session class we met. And um, we're going to go over page 92 and 93, introducing completing the square. And our goal is to take a general form of a quadratic equation and convert it to vertex form. So we're taking it from this form, converted it, converting it to this form. And these are both equivalent to one another. They just are written in two different ways. Okay. So the first method, there are two, um, is completing the square. Specifically, we're going to use the example y equals 3x squared plus 18x plus 5. Okay. So the first step in working method number one using completing the square is to factor out your a value but you are only going to factor out the a value from your x terms okay so only from the first two terms i'm assuming that you will always have it in you know general form where the square term is first the x term and then the constant last so we'll factor out the a term which in this case is our three so this is a b and c so i'm going to write y equals pulling out the three What's left over? The x squared. What's left over? The 6x. And I bring down my constant. So I undistributed. 3 times x squared is 3x squared. 3 times 6x is 18x. After I have factored out the a from my x terms, okay, so let me make sure I put that there, I am going to next do the step of completing the square. Okay, so here's what completing the square means. So in your parentheses, you have a squared term, a bx term, and you're missing a constant. Completing the square is about inserting a brand new constant inside that uh, parentheses to make this a perfect square trinomial. The way we do that, and the reason we want to make that a perfect square trinomial is because we want to make it really easy to factor okay so the formula to try and get that constant term that new c term is to take this b term in this case we have six okay take the b term and we're going to divide it by two and then we are going to square it so again our b term was a six we're going to divide it by two and we're going to square it six divided by two is three squared becomes a nine so this here, um, let's call this my new C value, okay? That's a new C value inside the parentheses. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to rewrite my function. Y equals 3 times x squared plus 6x. And I'm going to put the plus 9 in here. So I'm going to change the color just to make it a point that I'm inserting a brand new value that wasn't even part of the problem in the first place. I'm going to bring down that positive 5, but here's the thing with this pink number right here. You can't just throw in a brand new number just because you can't, okay? So I want to make sure that if I throw in a value that really wasn't there in the first place, that I make sure that I, at the same time, cancel it out. In other words, use my, my additive inverse properties. So I added in a 9, but really it was 3 9s because this 9 is trapped within these parentheses, and 3 9s makes it 27. So I'm going to make sure, and I subtract out a 27 on the outside of these parentheses. Okay? And so what I'm trying to make sure you, you see is that anytime you guys insert a brand new constant, if you have a coefficient other than 1 on the outside of that parentheses, make sure that you multiply by that coefficient. And then whatever number you put in there, make sure you are undoing it. In other words, whatever that number is, you need to do the opposite. Okay? If you expanded this out, you would notice that you would end up right back here. Okay? All right. So now the next step is factor that trinomial. Factor the perfect square 
trinomial. Okay, and the perfect square trinomials will always be either in this format. Um, let's just call it x minus c all squared or an x plus c squared. Okay, it's always going to be in that format because it's a perfect square trinomial. So let's do this. So I'm going to bring this down here so it matches up. So y equals 3 factored x squared plus 6 plus 9. Well, when it's a perfect square trinomial, just square root the front and the back end of your terms. And 5 minus 27 is negative 22. So now my format looks like the format I was trying to get of vertex form. Okay. And I can then find my vertex because it's in vertex form. So I'm going to write, so the vertex is my h, k, h, always do the opposite value. Why? Because negative says take the opposite. So that's going to be negative 3. K, they stayed the same. So keep the same value. So that's method number one, okay? And trying to write it in vertex form. Here's method number two. So let's write here method two. And here, instead of completing the square, we're going to be using the equation for vertex, which is, uh, let's see, how am I going to write this? Negative b over 2a, our axis of symmetry equation, comma, and then whatever our function is, we will substitute that value we obtained from the axis of symmetry equation to obtain our y. So this would be the h, basically, of our vertex, and this will end up being the k of our vertex. Or if you prefer thinking it as x and y, that's the same thing. So let me shift this up. So let's do that now. So we're going to start off doing vertex, I mean, starting using the axis of symmetry equation, which we just said is negative b over 2a, and we're doing the same problem. Our b value was a positive 18, so we put that over 2 times our a value was a 3. Again, reminding you where I'm getting this a, b, and c from, this here is my a value, this is my b value, and this is my c value, okay? So that's where I pull that information down from. When I simplify that, negative 18 divided by 6 ends up being negative 3. To find my y value, it says take look at your function and substitute whatever you got here. In this case, it's going to be my negative 3, and evaluate it. So going back to my original equation, 3 times negative 3 squared plus 18, negative 3, and then it was, whoops, I forgot the problem, plus 5. Order of operation says we need to do exponents first, so 3 times 9 plus 18 times negative 3 is going to be negative 54 plus 5. 3 times 9 is 27 minus the 54 plus the 5. 27 minus 54 is negative 27 plus 5 is negative 22. So if I take both of those answers, notice, I'm going to end up with negative 3, negative 22. Okay, so you can start seeing that this is already what we were getting up here in method number one. But this is what we're doing instead. Once we know what our vertex form, and we have established then that this is my h, and this is my k, I can go back to my vertex form of my equation. So this is going to require you memorizing this equation, okay? And you will substitute your h and your k. So a comes down, x minus my h is negative 3, plus my k is a negative 22. So I could say plus negative 22, or I could have written minus 22. And so a is x plus 3 squared minus 22. And most of you are just going from here straight to here. That turns the opposite. That stays the same. 
We don't know what A is, okay? So we need to find A. A lot of you are able to infer straight off the bat what A is going to be because just by looking at your problem, you know, three is the problem, the number that you would factor out from your X terms. And if I were to expand X plus three times X plus three, I know I'd end up with X squared plus six X plus nine. And I would need to distribute by some number A to convert my X squared into a three X squared. So A has to be three in this problem. But just in case you guys have to show work on this upcoming test, let me show you how you would do it, okay? So I know we can infer that this is a three, but let's show some, some work, okay? So let's choose a random point on our graph, okay? Totally random, okay? But I'm all about choosing points that are easy to work with. So if I had to choose the easiest point on my 3x squared plus 18x plus 5 graph, the easiest point for me to find is if I let x be 0, what would y be? Well, 3 times 0 squared is just 0, and 18 times 0 is 0, and 0 plus 0 plus 5 is 5. So wouldn't 0 comma 5 exist on this graph? If I know a point on the graph, then I can do the following. So my random point is going to be 0 comma 5. 0 was my x, 5 is my y. So what am I going to do? Substitute that into my equation here. So I'm going to bring down this y here to make it more obvious. So y equals a times x plus 3 squared minus 22. I am solving for a. So now solve for a. So I'm going to come over here because I'm running out of space. So let's do that. y is going to be replaced by 5 equals a, we're looking for it. My x is my 0 plus the 3 squared minus 22. Now I'm doing basic math. 5 equals a. 0 plus 3 is 3. 3 squared is 9 minus 22. I need to solve, so I will need to add 22 to both sides. So 27 equals a times 9 is 9a. I would need to divide both sides by 9, which follows that a is indeed 3, as we have inferred already. So, therefore, the vertex form of the equation we're looking for would be 3 times the x plus 3. So all I'm doing is substituting the a that I found, squared minus 20. Two. So that's the second way of finding the vertex form of a quadratic.